Elsword lights the old level cap on fire with the Lanix update, Dirty Bomb and Echo of Soul open the floodgates for open beta, Wildstar heads free to play this coming fall, and the Nexus is calling all Heroes of the Storm players. What's happening guys, James Blonde here with MMOWars.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements for the week ending June 1st, 2015. And starting out the news this week is Heroes of the Storm officially launching tomorrow, June 2nd. With that, they are celebrating really big in London with a special launch event and YouTube live stream. Not really sure why they didn't use Twitch on that one, but uh, a couple of new announcements are happening today. Besides the huge EXP boost, which starts with the launch tomorrow, they are also revealing Johanna the Crusader as the latest playable hero, Johanna from uh, Diablo. Check out the live stream recording from the site post at the link in the description below to pick up on all the latest details. Also from Blizzard, more Overwatch gameplay preview videos showed up this past week, and uh, we've only got about two weeks left until E3, so I swear, it's it's almost like they want to show us something really cool, and I can't wait to figure out what that is. I don't know, maybe I'm hoping too much. This time around, we see gameplay for Tracer, another offense-focused former Overwatch agent who can blink around the battlefield with pulse pistols. Sounds interesting. I guess the only way they really, you know, tell the game isn't lagging is because she has a bright blue streak behind her. Otherwise, it's kind of, kind of what she does. She can also bound backwards in time by a few seconds, which returns her health, ammo, and position on the map. So, if you mess up, you can kind of try again with her. With a cooldown, of course. Now, her ultimate is toned down a little bit, in my opinion, seeing that she can, you know, travel back in time and all. But she uses a fairly big sticky bomb that basically messes up your day if you step near it. We also get to see some match gameplay for Symmetra, another support character that sets up turrets around the map, that slows down enemies, and is also able to surround her allies only one at a time with a hard light shield that absorbs damage and sticks around as long as that ally remains alive. I don't know, that's pretty handy. Her ultimate is what I like to call Get the Heck Out of Dodge. With this, she places an escape teleporter pad where she is standing, and that turns around and sends her back to her team's starting position. And the nice thing is this also works with her allies. And in another recent news, it seems like Blizzard is actually getting really interested in making Overwatch a console title as well as multi-platform. It worked really well with Diablo 3 and Hearthstone, so... I don't see why not. Next up, other than Heroes of the Storm, several other games are firing up the launch or early access hype train lately, including Dirty Bomb heading into open beta tomorrow as well. According to the CEO of Splash Damage, which is the developer on Dirty Bomb, his inspiration started 20 years ago when he competed in tournaments and made a mod for Quake 3, then decided to start a development studio. So with that said, Dirty Bomb is a return to the classic FPS PC feel with the phonetic run-and-gun action built for players with an appetite for heated competition. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the game, and have some sort of like for team-based shooters with unique mercenaries with different abilities and cool weapons to choose from, then tomorrow's probably going to be a lot of fun for you and your friends, because Dirty Bomb hits open beta on Steam June 2nd. Also recently starting up the first round of its early access this past week is Armored Warfare, and by doing so, they've reached over a million registered players just for early access. Now, this first test started May 27th, and it's set to run until Wednesday, June 3rd, with more tests happening in the coming weeks, of course. The first test features the selection of 38 vehicles across six different tiers, four maps with completely different climates, the new and improved artillery system that I showed you guys in my first look, more commander and crew skills, a variety of ammo types to choose from, the battalion system, and of course the achievement system. Now the latest vehicle they've introduced which is included in the early access roster of tanks is the M2 Bradley, which is a tier 6 IFV equipped with a 25mm Bushmaster cannon and a freaking tow missile launcher. It's got lightweight but effective armor and really nice top speed. Now this one looks pretty beast mode, if you ask me, and if you're playing in the early access right now, let us know in the comments below what you actually think of the game so far. Also with My.com Games, Skyforge released a new developer diary this past week going over the large-scale guild events that happen in-game called Pantheon Wars, which are global battles for celestial temples. 
These battles consist of several different stages in both PvP and PvE formats. Now, the Pantheons are what guilds are called in Skyforge, and can consist of as many as 250 players in each one. When in war, these Pantheons fight over Celestial Temples, which grant the victor rewards that are all determined by an auction at the end of the week. The Celestial Temple's surrounding structure is divided into individual maps intended for PvP and PvE battles, and for PvE, 50 players from each Pantheon are divided into teams of 10 Immortals and tasked with participating in unique raids where they'll either defend or attack the Celestial Temple. During the raid, players have the option to either capture the other Pantheon's temple, which replaces your current one, or simply plunder it, which gives you rewards for your current temple. Likewise, if your Pantheon manages to capture a temple, it will remain vulnerable to attack, meaning that you'll need to be ready at all times in order to defend it. Sounds like a really fun yet demanding endgame. Check out the latest dev diary for all the details. Another game already in open beta, ready for launch, is Echo of Soul. This past week, the game kicked off its open beta test after its three-week-long closed beta, which has been a huge success according to area games. And according to the official news post, Echo of Soul is an MMO that offers countless ways to play, including 60 party and solo dungeons, several highly competitive PvP modes, and over 1,600 quests. Plus, the five playable classes have over 60 skills to choose from each. For more information about the game, check out my first look or try out the game yourself now that it's available free to play for everyone. Meanwhile, in Terra... So this is Mr. Brown Bear, and I'm writing Mr. Brown Bear as a brown bear myself. Not a lot to say about that other than you can now be a panda, riding a panda. Experiencing the world of Terra the way it should be played on the back of a bear. The community wanted them. Whether you like the brown bear, the white bear, or the panda And bear, now they got them. got all the bears you need. Bear mounts. Anyway, moving on, it seems like Albion Online is pushing forward towards its summer alpha with a new feature highlight video on farming. Now, the purpose behind farming in Albion Online is that it drives the economy and everything in the game depends on the economy. So the marketplaces will be hotspots for buying and trading farming goods. Players will be able to buy and sell nearly everything in-game, but it all comes down to farming. It's also a really great activity for the less combat-oriented approach to playing the game, so you can still provide for yourself and your guild without ever needing to pick up a sword or bow. You'll be able to produce livestock like cows, chickens, pigs, and goats that provide food and material, or horses and ox to provide efficient transportation. And of course, as you get better at farming, you'll be able to gain access to buildings such as the mill, the butcher, the cook, which are places that will let you create goods with your farming output. Now, it's really cool to see the advancement in the game's macros at this point. It's still in alpha, but I have a feeling that tons of players are going to love this game when it becomes more public. Next up, Elsword raises the level cap and introduces Lanux, the land of fire and ass, ash, I mean. Here, players will have to try their best not only to survive the violent landscape in Lanux, but also must try not to catch fire as the volcanic creatures attack. The land itself is apparently lethal and filled with creatures stronger and deadlier than players have ever faced. So the new update features new dungeons, new open fields, two new areas with new NPCs, and with this the level cap has been raised to 75 and KOG is hosting a Race to 75 event that rewards the first 10 players to reach the new level cap with real world prizes as well as some rewards for the first 100 players to do this. Pick up more details on the new update at the site post at thebrandnewmmwants.com. Well, it looks like a lot of us were right to assume Wildstar would end up going free-to-play. Last week, NCSoft and Carbine Studios announced that the game will transition to free-to-play by this fall. Over the next several months, the studios will share more details about how this transition will impact current and future players, along with more detail on the significant improvements they plan to have come to the game. Things like quality of life improvements, like streamlining player and item stats to be more intuitive, reevaluating some of the dungeon's difficulty, making the intro tutorial a little bit quicker, kind of things like that. According to the official post, they are removing the mandatory subscription to the game, but still offer it as an optional membership that provides various convenience bonuses and enhancements to XP, crafting, currency, item drops, and reputations. Now, members will also gain additional character slots, costume, bank slots, and core items, just to give you an idea on that. The in-game store will be focused on buying convenience or cosmetic items only, not power, of course, and the team behind the game is still focused on providing regular content updates. I'm not exactly sure what I think about this move just yet. I, I think I'm going to like it. Uh, I actually liked Wildstar for the brief time that I played it in beta, 
it was really just the monthly sub that was keeping me from exploring it more. But anyway guys, that's about it for all the major MMO news and announcements for this week. We've also got a really cool giveaway inbound on the forums for you guys uh, who are playing Wizard 101. We're raffling off 5 Aztecan Builder Bundles that are typically valued at $40 each. Link below if you're interested. Uh, other than that, if you're looking for more information about the news featured in the recap, check the links in the description below or head over to the new MMOHuts.com for even more MMO news. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below or head over to MMOHuts.com slash forum. And until next time, guys, it's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.